Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of In-Depth Angling. Today we're going to be covering over the Lake of the Ozarks fall crappie patterns, habits, and how you guys can catch these fish during the fall season. It can be kind of tricky to keep up with them a little bit, just because they're moving around so much during this time of year and how drastic the lake changes during the fall season. So we're going to dive right into this thing and their transition from summertime uh, into early fall which usually starts happening around September, like right now I'm recording this on September 24th. Um, we've had a couple nice days here where it's been like fall weather. It's going to be a little bit warmer again, uh, and then it'll cool back off. So it's Missouri. You have a lot of variables with it. But overall, that lake temperature is going to start to drop like a rock as we get closer and closer towards winter. And these fish that have been sitting out here along these points on the main lake out here, suspended out here chasing fish when they want to come up and feed or off at some of these docks that are sitting over some deep water as well as secondary points and channel swings deeper brush piles and things that I've covered in previous videos uh, which will be linked up there and in the description below if you want to go check out how to catch summertime crappie on Lake of the Ozarks as well those fish are going to be coming out of their summer patterns out of the deeper water and they're going to be starting to move more and more towards the shore and start to suspend upwards in the water column as water starts to cool off. The suspended fish um, will a lot of times come up underneath docks and chase shad around as the temperature starts to cool off. And they move upwards as the water kind of loses its heat in this upper layer as the water temperature cools off at the surface. They get a little bit more active, their metabolism picks up a little bit because the crappie have their ideal metabolism closer towards around the 60s and 50s in water temperature, which we get that in the fall. Again, the only other time we really get that around here at Lake of the Ozarks is during the spring uh, when they go and they do their spawning. So this is another prime opportunity for you to catch a lot of active crappie as they're going to be looking for bait as they try to fatten up and get a little bit more energy stored away for the winter season coming up because they slow back down again once their metabolism gets into that colder water it kind of shuts them back down and they become a little bit more lethargic. A big key to look for during this time of year as they're coming off of these creek beds and everything is the shallow flats because that's where the shad tend to go. They tend to rise up towards the surface, they come to the back of these pockets, um, they'll be back here underneath some of these docks and stuff and uh, those crappie will be along with them so they'll be chasing after them a lot of times crappie will set up and suspend underneath the dock especially if there's brush around because crappie are attracted to brush or woody structure year round it doesn't matter if it's summertime it's the fall it's spring it's winter whenever it is if you have wood around in your area you have a higher chance of you catching crappie there consistently because it gives them a structure to hide in and they are structure nuts. This time of year though, you can catch them along the banks in some areas. So I'm coming back here into a cove uh, where I've caught some fish before along some of these docks in here. And uh, there's a little fish icon right there. It's a good spot. This area has got some brush piles sunk around it. There's a lot of shade underneath some of these docks for good for dock shooting. Um, it's a really great technique to catch some of the suspended fish that are sitting underneath that dock shade. They like to come up in that water column and just kind of hang out there especially in the earlier part of the year they'll be on these first couple of docks over here they'll start to move further back so like september i'd probably catch a few more fish out here as you get a little bit further in maybe a couple more weeks they might be suspended up underneath some of these other docks further along back in the cove um, it's just kind of like a, a trial and error thing and keep trying different docks and move more water. So I, as I'm going through here and I'm dock shooting these because if you sit at one dock for too long and not catch anything, you'll be kicking yourself when you move the next one and find out there were 60 fish under it and it can really be like that on this lake. So just kind of moving around. You usually take a few shots, make, you make some different casts in different areas at the dock. So if you start out here at the corners and you kind of work on the back corners, take a couple shots here in the middle, if you don't get any bites, you don't see anything. If you have electronics, you don't see any kind of activity on those, any kind of structure down there. I'd be moving on to the next dock. And uh, if you find any kind of structure there, maybe give it a few more tries on some of those. But you want to keep moving water. It gives you a higher chance to just locate those fish as they're on the move and looking for a quick meal pretty much all the time throughout the fall. Trying to locate some of these fish, no matter what time of the season it is, your chances are going to be higher if you have shad in the area and you have brush in the area. Because the crop will sit in the brush, wait for the schools of shad to come by, and ambush them. So if you have brush piles along some of these docks, or along a creek uh, bed that's kind of runs right into the back flats here, because a lot of the times, the bass and everything else in the entire lake will be chasing after shad because they're trying to stock up 
their energy sources for the winter that's going to be coming up and their metabolism's at a high peak everything kind of peaks as the water temperature falls down a little bit more it happens at different times bass and crappie are pretty similar in water temperature uh, white bass really start to get picked up here later on but um, it gets to be kind of a crazy feeding frenzy all over for every kind of fish species during the fall season. Crappie are absolutely no exception to that rule. These backwaters of these coves and then these flats back here where it's really just a big open area and not much depth change to, those shad like to go back up in there. They're really good areas to kind of fan cast around. If there's shad back in there, you can catch basically every kind of species of fish in Lake of the Ozarks when you do that, especially using small crappie jigs because everything eats bait that size, especially like in the back of Lynn Creek over here. There's a bridge that comes in. It's got some current flow uh, whenever it rains, and it has a little bit all the time, but really it's more significant after a little bit of a rain and colder water back in there so the shad will be all over just kind of experiment with where they're at because they are on the move you can catch them sometimes they'll be on the bank sometimes they'll be suspended in uh, three or four foot of water and they'll be sitting right next to 50 feet of water so they're kind of all over the place um, just keeping track of where that shad is and where the brush is is going to be your best opportunity for you to be put on fish consistently and if you catch any in there one day, you might come back the next day and they might have moved to the dock right next to you. So don't be stubborn and thinking, oh, well, this was a good spot and I got to stay here. Be looking for new water. This is a good time to go and do that as the fish are on the move. So I'm up here now on the Osage Arm of the lake. This is up here by where the Grand Glaze Bridge is, which is on the Grand Glaze. And this is the Osage Arm up here. And there's crappie all over this lake. You don't have to go back over to Lynn Creek like I was in the last segment right there. Uh, you can catch them out of any arm of this lake. This lake is huge. Um, there's fish under all kinds of crappie, brush piles, all kinds of docks that people have had up for years. They put a bunch of old Christmas trees down. They put a whole bunch of PVC pipe brush piles. There's just a wide variety of stuff. Some docks are just created better because they have more shade or because of their location uh, over the top of an area where the fish like to swim through like over a creek bed. So I wanted to show you guys this. The lake is huge so whenever the bite is starting to pick up more so into uh, the backs of the coves and let's say Lynn Creek Cove where I was just at it might be completely different from where it is down here towards the lower end of the lake by Bagnell Dam because the water is just so much deeper it takes longer for it to cool off and as you get those colder nights the water chills off, you see all the steam coming off the lake, and it's getting colder. And then eventually we get something called the fall turnover, where the water on the top of the water cools off enough, it starts to sink and becomes the denser water, pushing this water that's on the bottom that's actually warmer back up towards the surface, which stirs up the bottom with it. So it takes the water, pushing it down, and kind of creates this little bit of a effect where it sucks up some of the debris on the bottom of the leaves and mud and it gets the lake kind of stained up real bad and kind of muddy looking for a few days. It usually happens all for the most part within a week. Fish can be caught during that time as well and fall turnover might not start down here by the Bagnell Dam like I said as soon as it will on these upper ends of the Osage Arm over here towards Truman or up here along the Nianguas because there's shallower bodies of water up there. Um, the main channel in some places only gets down to 20 or 30 feet and down here by the time you get to the Bagnell Dam you're looking at like 80 to 90 feet in the main channel pretty commonly it goes over 100 down here as well right in the old river basin it's kind of a big lake to try to dissect all in one piece you have to kind of split it up into sections so depending on where you're fishing the water temperature will change and some of these fish are down here by the dam will kind of hang out in their summer patterns just a little bit longer than what they will on those upper ends because shallower water cools off faster. I'm going to show you guys a couple of different points that I fish pretty regularly and catch a lot of bass and crappie and everything else off of during the summertime. Um, there's a couple of them right around and through here in this cove that hold a lot of fish year round. Um, they're going to be out there during the summertime. You can still catch fish there right now. As the temperature kind of cools off, they'll be moving towards the backs of these coves. It gets shallower back in there. There's lots of structure any of these points over here you can catch bass you can catch crappie you can catch catfish at times as the shad move everything else does and they all kind of start coming back in here and start uh, feeding up really heavily 
And then as soon as we get towards more of the winter and things really start to cool off, they leave the shallows again and kind of come back out here and suspend a little bit deeper and we get more into their winter patterns where the metabolism slows down, they're not out chasing shad as much and they're kind of just going more into a lethargic state of being where they'll still suspend underneath docks and in brush piles and kind of go back out to where they were during the summertime in the deeper water and off those creek channels and brush piles. So it kind of goes full circle with everything. Um, they kind of make a little bit of a boomerang pattern where they come up and go right back out as different stuff happens and cold fronts can push them right back out during this time of year as well because they're not up there to spawn. They're just up there for food. So if a cold front hits and the water gets really muddy and bad, expect those fish to move back out towards the deeper water from where you were the day before. It might be a few docks. It might be a whole nother like half a mile away from you before you start catching calling numbers of fish again. I'm going to show you guys one more river arm of the lake over here. This is the Niangua, the big Niangua right here on my right, which I'm going to click right there. This is the little Niangua coming into it. And uh, they kind of fish pretty similarly. There's a lot of brush piles in this cove. There's a whole bunch of docks as you get further back in here. It's got a gradual flat that's in the back here. A lot of shad like to pool up back in there. Bass fishing becomes good. Crappie fishing becomes good. At times, white bass can be good back in there. They just kind of chase shad all the time. So they're really going to be more shallow during the fall than any other time because the shad are more shallow and it becomes a hot bite for them as well. I hope this helped you guys out in locating some of those fish. It's just gonna be kind of an experimental thing for you to try out. Dock shooting, I would say, is your best bet um, from day to day. It just kind of depends on what dock they're gonna be at, and you're gonna have to kind of move water. Once you get a bite in a spot, stay there for a little bit and see what else you can get. But if you're not getting good quality bites within 10, 15 minutes uh, at a dock, if you're not catching a a lot of fish because they will be feeding and be stacked up on some dock within a longer cove. If you pick a bigger enough cove, you're going to find fish in there somewhere because the shad are all moving off the main channel and they, they will go into the bigger coves. So I hope this helped you guys out with locating some of the crappie, how you guys catch them, and what you guys need to be looking for in order to become more efficient and more productive out on the water during this time of year at Lake of the Ozarks. If this video helped you guys, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any more videos like this. I do breakdowns of Lake of the Ozarks for multiple species. We try to educate you guys so you guys can be more successful each and every day you're out there. Have more fun, catch more fish, and become better anglers overall. Thank you guys for watching so much. Hit that like button down below if you enjoyed this and share with your friends. Thank you guys. Have a good day. We'll catch you next time.